Everybody really nice to hop into Hive Swap Friends Sim. Let's go. So last time we left off on volume 11 of Pals and Promises Made and Broken. Another night, another long, long walk. Despite the blisters, you have started to feel truly optimistic. You've got a lot going for you these days. True, you're still technically a castaway on a hostile planet with absolutely no hope of rescue. But if you're completely honest, Earth was pretty shitty too. Sure, 98% of everyone here is a psychopath who would rip your face off as soon as look at you, but it's the other 2% that are really going to make you make it all worth it. Linera Scalby. I'm going to forget how to say this name many, many times. Anyways, let's go. You had such good luck making friends lately that you feel almost popular, but at the same time you feel a strange sense of loneliness that new friendship doesn't seem to penetrate. Maybe being the only one of your species light years away from home is starting to catch up with you. Or maybe you're starting to understand why popular kids in movies sometimes seem so sad. A number of trolls now like you, but do any of them truly know you? What you wouldn't give to hang out with someone you have real history with, with someone whom you don't have to do the inductory dance of, yes, I'm clearly an alien, no, I don't know what's going on. Someone with whom you could reminisce about old times, someone you've hung out with more than once. Right now, you're on the outskirts of town, and the rocky outcrops surrounding you are familiar. You're pretty sure that the entrance to the brooding caverns is around here somewhere. Your heart beats a little faster. Bronio lives close to here and talks about history. You two know each other deeply from hanging out once and then seeing her again, her ex-mate Spritz Hive. Plus, you have a phone now. You have the power to text first. You get out the phone Kanil gave you. Look at you go. Reading an alien language operating alien technology just fine. Does it make sense that you've learned how to read a new alphabet in weeks without anyone teaching you? I mean, maybe, but I mean, that's... We'd have to be a genius to do that, but eh. Not really, but maybe your struggles with Spanish class in high school were just a fluke, and you've been, in secret, a linguistic genius this whole time. Perhaps, if one would dream... Brona texts you back immediately, giving you directions for how to meet her in the caves. You head down, but before the Jade Blood Hive is in sight, a troll emerges from the shadows. At first, you think it's Bronya, but you freeze mid-wave when this new troll steps into the light. Bronya doesn't wear glasses, and she has never glared at you like that. It's you. I remember you. You were down here a few weeks ago. Bothering Bronya and distracting her when we almost had a Lucis stampede. Ouch, is that really how Bronya has described your adventures together? Maybe it's silly for something that small to hurt your feelings when another recent friend nearly got you killed in Clown Church. But you like to think you and Bronya formed a real connection. She never made you feel like you were bothering her. A real connection? Is that why you think you can just come down here and text her? Holy shit, is Larna reading Bronya's messages? Does Bronya know she's been doing that? That's none of your business. Bronya and I are best friends. I'm just looking out for her. She has lots of J-Blood responsibilities and doesn't need anyone shifty coming in to disrupt her. You have to wonder if Bronya would agree with this statement made on her behalf, and you sure would like to see her in person and confirm for yourself. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Why don't you tell me? What is the nature of your relationship? Why would I allow you to hang out with her? As your text message so boldly suggested... 
bluffing has shaved your ass in some bleak situations before, but you could also go on the offensive here. You're concerned about Bro Bronya's privacy now. And as for her friend, maybe you shouldn't just look the other way. Make wild claims about your friendship with Bronya to save yourself. What right does Lyrna have to creep on Bronya's phone? Oh, okay, so that's her anger meter. What right does Lyrna have to creep on Bronya's phone? You puff up with the self-righteousness you can muster. The nature of your relationship with Bronya is between you and Bronya, and you're not doing anything suspicious by wanting to see your friend. In fact, it seems a lot more suspicious that Lyrna is trying to intercept anyone who messages Bronya. What possible reason could she have to justify that? Well, I never! As I said before, I am Bronya's best friend. I take our relationship, I mean, my responsibilities as a friend, very seriously. You press the issue, narrowing your eyes and crossing your arms over your chest. Her responsibilities as a friend? Huh. Sounds kind of... fishy. Fishy? Are you serious right now? Are you really coming down here to make fish puns? Like some kind of sea dweller? That is so suspicious. Who knows what Bronya decided to show you when you tricked her into trusting you? Not that we have anything to hide, but... Who knows? If you're at all associated with Sea Dwellers, then we have a big problem on our hands, don't we? We've... you've heard of Sea Dwellers by now, but none of your friends have talked about them much. Mostly you've gathered that they dwell in the sea. You don't know why it would be extra bad for you to be one of them, but it's clear you need to backpedal. Before you can try to disown your choice of fish-related phrasing, Larna advances on you. Obviously, I can't let you talk to Bronya now. You are way too suspicious. I think you and I should have a private conversation instead. At least your life is uneventful when you are unconscious. When you come to, you're sitting in a chair with your wrists tied as your eyes adjust to the darkness. You realize that you are in a smaller cave than the big open taverns that led to the Jade Blood Hive. The light switches on, and you can see that the cave walls are lined with bookshelves, and there's a desk in the corner. There are books and notebooks and bulletin boards that, with what looks like outlines and study guides pinned to them. And in front of you is Lyra, holding a knife. Oh good, you're awake. This is my study cave. In the Jaybloods Hive, it's harder to concentrate because people break the rules and I get irritated. So I come here to do homework. That's all, just homework. When you take a second look at the bulletin boards, you see that a lot of what Lyra has pinned up are pictures of Bronya. I see, we have a Yandere on our hands. There are a few pictures of Lyna and Bronya together, but it's mostly just Bronya and by herself, and even a couple blurry photos of Bronya and Elward. Oh no, don't kill Elward, I please. What are you looking at? There's nothing to see here. She brandishes a knife in your face, and okay, yeah, sure, now she and her gigantic knife have your full attention, and you're not looking at creepy Bronya's shrine anymore. I brought you here because your messages to Bronya were highly suspicious. I don't know you, and I don't trust you. You could be trying to see Bronya for nefarious purposes. So I brought you here, to vet you. Vet? What? Now we can talk about what your real intentions are. So you're definitely going to die in this cave, held captive by an unhinged jade blood who was convinced of your guilt from the moment you dared to text her best friend. That kind of sucks. You tried so hard and you got so far, but in the end it doesn't even matter. 
tried so hard and got so far But in the end, it doesn't even matter I'm sorry Oh come on, stop playing the victim If anyone is the victim here, it's me I try so hard to be there for Bronya as her best friend, but she doesn't even... Lyra stops abruptly. You see her lower lip starts to tremble before she turns her face away from you. The sharp tip of the knife pointed at your throat droops a bit. Its dejected swing make, takes it dangerously close to your navel, and you try to subtly lean backwards in your chair. Lyra enters interprets the noise of distress that escapes your mouth as a noise of sympathy. It's fine, though. It's really fine. It's fine. Our friendship is great. I wouldn't change anything about it. It's fine as long as she doesn't have any other friends. Because I'm her best friend. I should be the only one she needs. Liner's knife is now completely lowered, pointing at the floor. That gives you some hope. She seems to have forgotten about her sea dweller's suspicions. Maybe if you can keep her talking about Bronya, the whole stabbing notion can be taken off the table, and she might even let you go. You rack your brain for all the knowledge of alternian relationship dynamics that you've managed to compile during your time on this planet. Best friends, they have a special word for that, right? You tell Lyrna that you're sure Bronya doesn't need anyone else, and if she and Bronya are morals, then Ly not Lynra must be very special to her. What? I never said we were morals. It's not that even that quadrant that I want her in. I mean, uh, never mind how dare you make assumptions. Hello, knife point again. Oh shit, all you meet to say was that you thought her relationship with Bronya was probably fine. You figured they must be in a quadrant together because you're a clueless alien, you're bad. I get why you would think that. Ugh, it's probably so obvious that my... my feelings for her... are very red. Lyra bang hangs her head, and her shoulders shake. Tears roll down her cheeks, dripping into her crisp shirt collar and the knot in her jade-green tie. I know I don't have a chance. She doesn't think of me that way. I'm her loyal friend and second-in-command. That's all I will ever be to her, no matter what. And I try to do a really good job at being her best friend. Because what else can I do? If I'm her best friend, then at least I'm still in her life. At least, I mean something to her. Maybe it's the fact that Lina's knife hasn't come close to any of your major arteries for a hot minute, or maybe it's the tears. Either way, you feel sympathy encroaching on the monopoly that object terror and previously maintained in your brain's economy. You've acted in a verbal-sounding board or sympathetic ear for some of your other troll friends while they dealt with crises of various kinds. Slipping into the role of therapist for someone who's holding you hostage at knife point is a new one for you, but unfortunately it's not that much of a stretch. It seems like young trolls in Alternia have to deal with these heavy life issues themselves, feeling so alone that they're willing to turn to an alien stranger to help them work things out. Then again, maybe life is that grim and isolating for human teenagers, too, and you just never noticed before. Maybe everyone's too mired in their own shit to look up and realize that the movie's fecal matter is waist-high for everyone around them, too. You clear your throat and speak with as much consoling gentleness as you can muster while your head still throbs from where not Lyra knocked you out. It seems like trying to be Bronya's best friend isn't making Lyra very happy. Of course it isn't making me happy. I can't keep her from having other friends no matter how hard I try. And she's amazing, so of course everyone wants to be her friend. Including you, apparently. 
you barely even had a chance to miss that knife before it's waving around again. Yikes, your friendship with Bronya is nothing like her relationship with Lynra. You count as any kind you don't count as any kind of competition. Bronya is one of the many friends to you, and while you cherish her and support her endeavors, you appreciate the joy and fulfillment that can come from having many different friends instead of depending on a single person to meet all of your emotional needs. Sounds fake. Why would I ever want any friends besides Bronya? She is my whole world. Okay, but it seems like it's painful for Lyna to be relying on Bronya to be her whole world when Bronya isn't doing the same in return. Has Lyna ever talked to Bronya about any of this? No. Never. I'm terrified to tell her how I feel. Being her best friend feels awful. But losing her would be so much worse. I can't take that risk. But if Lyrna never talks to Bronya about her feelings, she'll always be unhappy because she wants more. Even if she thinks that it's unlikely that Bronya feels the same way, maybe opening communication with her friend could help Lyra process her feelings and move on. You know that Lyra has a big heart, or blood pusher, and many fine qualities, and she doesn't deserve to be stuck in this unhappy, unrequited relationship purgatory forever. Wow. You really think I have fine qualities? You try very hard not to think about the glint of that knife. Sure, Lyra has positive qualities, you seem loyal and well-organized and studious and caring. Some troll out there is going to want the same kind of closeness from her that Lyra is looking for, and she owes it to herself to take action that could lead to happiness instead of being stuck in a sad situation forever. I don't know. Maybe you're right, or maybe you're wrong. But I don't want to move on. Even if I know I should. I just... I want to be with Bronya forever. Lyra crumples to the ground, dropping the knife and sobbing into her hands. It's hard to watch someone in this much distress and not want to help them, but on the other hand, her misery has distracted her, and this might be your only chance to try and escape. Attempt to comfort, attempt to escape. I feel that trying to comfort her is going to end up being the bad one, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Because this game is not always that straightforward, so comfort. You remember what you did for Polypa, and when she was upset. Sitting in a chair with both hands tied behind you doesn't make for the ideal shoosh popping conditions, but maybe you can approximate the gesture. Lina is huddled, crying on the floor, and you think you could maybe get close enough to lean your knee against her back or something. Hopefully that would be interpreted in the same way as the classic palm-to-cheek movement. You inch your chair closer to her, but you lose your balance and wobble and then topple forward. Liner's discarded knife is right there, sharp edge ready to plunge right into your incoming soft body when Liner moves quickly and grabs your chair and saves your life. Oh shit, that was a close one. You really could have died. She stares at the knife with huge round eyes, clearly shaken up by your near-death experience just now. Considering how often you nearly die these days, you feel more blessed than about it. But you're glad it's having an impact on her, if it makes her rethink the whole kidnap and stab thing. I'm so sorry. I don't want you to actually die. I saw what you were doing with that chair when you fell. You were trying the traditional seated frond hinge shoosh path because I was upset. It was very kind of you to try and to console me. I never really thought you were a sweet sea dweller, you know? Maybe what I'm doing is... wrong. Lyrna sets her jaw with conviction and with one slash cuts you free of your bonds. You get to your feet stumbling a bit because your leg fell asleep. So was mine, that's why I had to move in this chair. You can't believe you're getting out of this situation without any blood loss. You feel positively elated about this turn of events, but Lyna still looks sad. 
you're free to go. You must think the worst of me after all this. Well, you're not going to lie, this wasn't the best start to a friendship you've ever had, but horrifyingly enough, it also wasn't the worst. What was that? Something fell in my room and my cat's not even in here. That was weird. Okay, let's continue. Well, you're not going to lie, this wasn't the best start to a friendship you've ever had, but horrifyingly enough, it also wasn't the worst. You feel for Lynra, and you want to show her how you, f a real friend-making aficionado, aficionado gets out there and meets people. You think making new friends could help her feel less clingy about Bronya. Oh, you would really do that for me? I'm not so sure about new friends. But you do seem to know what you're talking about. You don't know where to go with Larna to teach her how to make new friends. She is probably a bit too uptight to enjoy the music clubs you've been to, and you don't think the trolls studying the book hive would take so kindly to a lot of loud, friendly conversation. You decide to go to the cafe that Elward introduced you to, thankfully. They're not having you excessively bodily force poetry night since you're not sure that would be Liner's scene. There are a number of sirlines here, but you will also spot a few indigos and teals and a cluster of defiant looking olive bloods with some yellows all sitting together. There's a crowd is overall less pierced and undercutted than it was when you were here with Elward. And the vibe is laid back with all the trolls that just sitting around and quietly chatting. You order drinks, and already taking for granted your newly acquired skill in reading troll language, Lyna is fidgeting when you sit down with her. This may come as a shock to you, but I don't get out of the caverns very much. I don't have time. There's so much to learn about jade blood life and troll reproduction. And Brony needs my help to maintain order. It's not very often that I have to, uh, interact with trolls of other blood colors. You're not sure what's making her uncomfortable, the trolls around here that are lower than her on the hemo spectrum, or the ones that are higher. You've worked out now, the jades are right in the middle, so maybe Larna identifies with neither and have nor the have nots from what you remember, neutrality is a big concept with jades. You assure Lina is it's natural to be a little nervous. Most people feel like they're stepping out of their comfort zone when they make a new friend. If there's one thing you've learned as Alternian's resident friend-making expert, it's that terror and embarrassment are par with for the course. It's worth it in the end. I'm not nervous or embarrassed. It's just... I don't know. Everyone seems disorganized and suspicious and untrustworthy and unknown. You have to bite your lip to keep from laughing. It's not even funny, it's just that Lyra is hissing all her words and leaning in towards you and glaring at the rest of the room and the overall effect is weirdly endearing. Like someone put a 1950s school uniform on a feral cat. Before you can try again to reassure her, a new troll ambles up to your table. She looks friendly. That's a friendly amble. She's wearing glasses and carrying a book bag and has a teal symbol on her chest. So she might be a nerd like Lyra. This could be a good new friend match. Hi guys. New friend. I think I've seen you around here before. Do you also study at the book hive? You open your mouth to invite the new friend to sit down, but before you can respond, Liner interjects. That is not any of your business, is it? Why do you even want to know? Obviously, anyone who goes to the book hive to study goes there for peace and quiet. So why would you think you can bother us because you've recognized us from there? Okay, okay, jeez. My bad, never mind. See you around, never. And just like that, a golden opportunity for friendship has gone up in a puff of smoke. What Lyna was thinking, being so rude, doesn't she want to learn how to make friends? I changed my mind, okay? There's no way I could be friends with any of the people here. I don't know them. 
Not like I know you. You're surprised to hear that Lyra feels so positive about you when she was ready to stab you an hour ago. She takes your hand in both of her hands, squeezing your fingers tight. I know we didn't get off to a great start, and that's my fault, but I can make it up to you. We're friends now, and we'll be friends forever. And I will call anyone who will ever think about trying to fuck with you. Thank you. I got a powerful babes. This is not quite the lesson you had hoped to teach her without making friends, but maybe with her fierce loyalty and possessive streak spread out between you and Bronya, Lyra can be a little more low-key about being a friend to both of you. The determined look in her eyes and the ominous glint in her glasses don't scream low-key, but... Change doesn't always happen overnight, and you believe in second chances. You believe that Lyra will be capable of a healthy relation, a healthy friendship someday. <laughs> friendship. Attempt to escape. You look around to see if there's anything within reach you could use to free your bound hands. On the desk, a few feet away, you spot a spiral-bound notebook with a nasty-looking edge on its binding. You scoot your chair over, doing your best not to make any noise, but Lyra is too busy wailing to notice regardless. You get hold of the notebook and saw through the rope with your wrists. on your wrists. It was so hard to watch her and Elward together. Elward doesn't deserve her! She was so mean. I know she's a Serlene, but I swear if she shows her face in those caverns again, I will go straight for her primary spurt artery. You're gonna slit her throat? It's a good reminder that Lyra is dangerous. You saw faster in success, your hands are now untied. Lyra's back is turned, so while she gets up from the floor, you take a quick look at the notebook in your hands. It seems to be a fully annotated and organized scrapbook slash diary chronicling Liner's really friendship with Bronya. On one hand, it's a bit creepy in the context of how you're still held hostage by the person who made this, but on the other hand, it does pull at your heartstrings. Of course it does. But you keep a firm grip on those heartstrings because you've still got to get out of here. When Lina turns back to face you, you leap from your chair, brandishing the scrapbook in front of you, like a shield. If she comes any closer with that knife, you can destroy the scrapbook in an instant with your acidic spit. That's right, your alien anatomy has destructive powers that can vaporize Lina's precious Bronya memories in seconds. No, you can't! What are you doing? How dare you touch that book! For a terrifying second, you think she might lunge at you, but then Lyra steps up to the side, giving you a straight shot to the cavern exit. As you scuttle your way towards freedom, you remember your phone. Lyra took it from you when she knocked you out. You don't know how you could possibly get another one. No way! I'm not giving you anything you might use to contact Bronya. I won't have you messing, messaging her behind my back and trying to replace me as her best friend. It seems like nothing you said when you were tied up had any impact at all. Maybe forcing people at knife point to be your therapist doesn't result in quality therapy. You still had it feel bad for her, but it's time to break out the big guns. If Lyra doesn't return your phone, you will find another way to reach Bronya. You'll tell her everything, not only the lowdown on Lyra's stalking and kidnapping tendencies, but also the truth about Lyra's feels better. Lyra gapes at you. Her eyes fill with tears again, but she hands over your phone. I can't believe how cold you are. I thought that maybe we were bonding, but maybe I sh could start to trust someone other than Bronya. But you didn't mean a single word of all those things I s you said. Lyra's face twists and contorts between rage and grief. When you make the phone scrapbook trade, she drops the knife in her other hand and clutches the scrapbook to her chest like it's one of the wrigglers in the Jade Blood Nursery. You don't feel guilty for doing what you had to do to escape unharmed, but you can't help but wish that you had been able to actually help her. It's clear to me now. Bronya is the only friend I will ever have. Oh. 
Make wild claims about your friendship with Bronia to save yourself. You and Bronia go way back if Lyra un is unfamiliar with your history. It might be because your friendship with your Bronia predates hers. And actually, part of you texted her today was because your close friendship has recently been getting a little red, you could say. Bronia needed someone to step in and fill the hole in her blood pusher left by Elward, after all. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Considering the changing nature of your relationship, Bronya has been even more protective of your of you than usual lately. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> Larna doesn't seem unimpressed. Wait, Larna doesn't seem impressed by your astute cultural knowledge. Nor does she look intimidated. Her glasses reflect opaque in the murky cavern light as she takes a step closer. Her claws, you've just noticed, are very sharp. Bronya is very protective of those she pities. You've got that much right. If you're telling the truth. And I don't know that you are. Maybe she would want to protect you. If she knew that you were here. Oh fuck, you fucked up. If Lyrna intercepted Bronya's phone, then Bronya has no idea you reached out, and you can be disposed of with none the wiser. Oh no. Look what you made me do. You had no idea someone in a skirt that long could move so fast. Yup, we're dead. <laughs> So that was it. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to see more than I've done. I'll put links in the description. Check out my channel, blah blah blah. Hope you all liked it. Keep gaming!